y'all, and welcome back to a new devotion. We're continuing with our devotional Turning Points with God by David Jeremiah. Today's title is Reckon on His Faithfulness. Our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. This devotion is found on page 185. Um, I'm going to be reading my scripture from the King James Bible, and it says, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. In his book, People, My Teachers, British preacher John Stott recalls discovering a literary genre called Christian biography as an undergraduate at Cambridge University. Stott said that in reading about the lives of giants in the faith, he found his own life mentored by a host of heroes. Especially impressive was J. Hudson Taylor, the memorable missionary to China, who through his biography taught Stott the power of steadfastness in faith. Hudson Taylor's primary principle was dependence on God alone. And it's no accident that one of his biographies was entitled The Man Who Believed God. Hudson Taylor taught that faith rests on God's faithfulness, and he liked to render Jesus' command to have faith in God, that's a reference from Mark 11 and 22, as reckon on the faithfulness of God. This paraphrase, although not exegetically exact, is theologically correct, said Scott Stott. Because God is faithful, we can reckon on his faithfulness, believe his promises, depend on his help, and have faith in his watchful care. Trust him today. Reckon on his faithfulness. I have found that there are three stages in every great work of God. First, it is impossible. Then, it is difficult. Then, it is done. That is a quote by J. Hudson Taylor. Wow. I mean, God is trying to let us know, don't give up. Don't give up. It doesn't matter how impossible a situation you're in or encounter looks. It doesn't matter how difficult it may look. To us, all things are impossible and difficult, okay? We cannot do anything without God's help. And then there are some things we just can't do at all. But nothing is impossible or too difficult for God. And I love this because y'all know I love talking about faith. I cut my teeth on faith. I live on faith. I quote faith all the time. I find myself, you know, even to my family members as they start to say something, like my mother-in-law, for example, she's on the hunt for her house. She's put in an offer and she keeps saying, I know they're not going to take it. I know this. I said, I said, do I need to quote you Hebrews 11 and 1 and remind you what faith is? Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. God wants us to have faith. He honors our faith. He loves our faith. And he is faithful. We have a great example of what true faithfulness is, and that is God. Because honestly... There's not a whole lot you can do to make him stop loving you. I mean, the Bible only tells us of one unforgivable sin, and that's blasphemy. That's denying God and denying who he is. And, and you know, that's the unforgivable sin. But I look back on my life and the things that I did that I know hurt him and was not pleasing to him and definitely did not line up with scripture. And yet, through it all, he never gave up on me. He always loved me. He always kept his hand on me. He protected me. And I don't even understand why, because I would have probably given, well, I did give up on myself a long time ago. I gotta close this door. I don't want the TV to come through, but I gave up on myself, but he never did. And he never has, and he never will. Just like we are with our children, no matter what they do. We're always going to be there for them. We're always going to believe in them. We're always going to, you know, help them. We're always going to talk them up, encourage them. 
Um, we always know what they're capable of, even when they don't even know it. Um, and that's just our job as a parent. And I know that so many times I use the role as a parent to kind of like understand the best that we can understand God because he is our father. And I know that my daddy in his frail body, in his most weakened state he's ever been in, if I would have came to him, he would have done everything he could to help me. And he would have been limited to what he could do. Even to this day, he has limitations. We all do, we're humans. But our father in heaven has no limitations. Nothing is too difficult. He specializes in the impossible. I think that a lot of times we encounter impossible impossible situations for two reasons. One, so he can show us who he is and what he's capable of. And two, to build our faith. I mean, if you've ever had an impossible situation come into your life and God got you through it and he moved and you... you I have situations, I still don't know how he did it, okay? I still can't figure it out, but that's okay. I draw from those times when I'm going, when I'm facing other difficult, impossible situations. I look back and I draw strength from those. And that's why we do it. That's why we go through those things. That's why he allows difficult to us, impossible to us situations to come into our lives so he can show us. What is difficult for you, what is impossible for you, is not impossible for me. For nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. He didn't say, well, pretty much everything is, is possible for me, but, uh, but, you know, no. Nothing is impossible for God. He can do any and everything. If there is no solution, he will make a solution. If there is no way, he can make a way. He can work it all out and it will be seamless and perfect. And you will sit there scratching your head, figuring out, trying to figure out how, how, did, how did that happen? How, how did it work out like that? He's God. He's God. He's amazing. And as heavy as some of our devotions can be, such as deceit proofing our mind, that was a heavy devotion for me. Um, he also wants us, yeah, be aware of that. Deceit proof your mind. Be aware. But at the same time, don't lose your faith. Don't look at what's going on and think, there's just no way we're going to get out of this. There's no way God can fix this. There's no way. And hey, there is a way. He is the way. And he can fix it. And he can work it out and make it all perfect. Nothing is impossible for God. Keep your faith. If you have to, write down your favorite scriptures and plaster them all over your house at different times. So when the devil tries to put some deceit into your mind and he tries to put some doubt into your mind, remind him who you serve. Remind him of his fate. Remind him he is nothing and nobody. He has no power that he has to go to God to get permission to even mess with you. He can't do anything that he is not allowed to do. So that tells me when you're going through something, we can have total confidence and faith that God has got us. Everything is by his design. And some things we go through are self-inflicted, but God still doesn't give up on us then. In fact, he will go above and beyond for us then too. He is an amazing God full of love. We can trust him. We can depend on him. He will be faithful to us to the end. He will be with us to the end. And I don't know about you, but in the day and hour we live in, that gives me peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. How when you walk out and you face the world, to know that God has got his hand on you. I remember um, James and I was divorced. I was had lost my job. I had started another job. No way was I going to make the kind of money that I needed to sustain this house payment and a car payment and just living expenses. But I remember I was, I had got up, got ready for work and I was on my way and I had to pull into the gas station and I will never forget the feeling I had come over me. Even though my life was in that mess and I knew 
There was no way I was going to be able to fix it and make it all happen. I had such a peace about me. I literally could feel God watching every step I took, pulling up to buy my gas, getting back on the road. I felt his presence all around me. I felt so safe and secure in the midst of a very chaotic time in my life of just not knowing what I was going to do. And I was hurt on top of all of that. But the peace and the love I felt from God, that day sticks out in my mind more than any other time that I really can truly, I mean, I probably could remember if I just sat and thought about it, but that day, I can tell you what I was wearing. I can tell you how my hair was fixed. I can tell you what gas station I pulled up to. I can tell you what pump I pulled up. I can tell you every aspect about that day, which is a miracle because my memory, <laughs> Not so good, but <laughs> on certain details and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But I can tell you everything because I remember so vividly that feeling. And I'm sure you have similar situations where you can recall a time like that. And that was just my confirmation from God. And I went to work that day, you know, came home. I can't remember anything else about that day. But I remember that time of that day so specifically and the feeling that I had and I had that feeling with me the whole day and I, I I pull back I look back and I draw from that when I'm going through some things because he's the same God now to me as he was then and I'm in a our relationship has grown and we've gotten closer so he's even more to me now than he was then and he was that good to me and that close. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But y'all, we can trust him. Just keep the faith, no matter what it looks like, what you're facing, keep the faith because he is faithful. And if he's given you a word and he's given you scripture, I don't care what it looks like around you, hold on to it. Speak life into it anyway. Speak life, speak faith, Speak hope, trust, all that into it. And you're going to see what God can do. He's going to show you that nothing is impossible or too difficult for him. He's an amazing God. This was very encouraging. I love it when he encourages us. I love it when he gives us words to just hold on to. Hold on to. And to just take with us. I love that. I love each and every one of you. I pray you have an amazing day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.